welcome back and thank you for staying with us. We are consuming more now and at a time when resources are getting scarce. Consumers are also more aware now of what they're eating and it sparked a food revolution to find more sustainable sources of food. At this facility, researchers have succeeded in improving the yield and quality of Asian sea bass. And there's also a search for alternative protein sources like grasshoppers. Cho Keng Yu takes a peek into the future of food. Grasshoppers for lunch? Someone makes you an offer. Do you go, yuck? It may surprise you, but it's pretty common to eat insects in Asia. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Office, or FAO, estimates that about 2 billion people worldwide, mainly in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, eat insects. Nutrition profile of insects is such a very interesting because it's very similar to other uh, animal sources in terms of uh, protein content, uh, lipid content, and things like that, and micronutrients like vitamins or these. As awareness of their nutritional value grows, insects are joining in the new food wave. There is a revolution going on to change the way we produce food, to change the traditional ingredients of food, and that will make sure that the food supply uh, is sustainable into the future. The key here is a sustainable and secure food future. We have 7 billion people and FAO said that we are going to have 9 billion people by 2050 and also general disposable income is growing. So as people grow richer, they want to have protein, they want to have more food and because of that we are in need to feed uh, the world. But however climate is changing as well as land use uh, due to urbanization is getting uh, more scarce. Consumers are also becoming more socially conscious and more aware of what they eat. People may not be satisfied with food source that are questionable and also how uh, food are being farmed. The, the large usage, usage of uh, antibiotics, the large killing of animals. Venture capitalist Eugene Wong saw the trend and decided to invest in Hago Food Tech an Israeli startup that farms grasshoppers on a commercially viable scale. But why grasshoppers? Insects like crickets are actually one of the more popular sources of alternative protein. Grasshopper actually, uh, uh, as an insect group, swarms together. You are able to potentially grow grasshopper in a large uh, quantity. Secondly, the protein amount, as you farm, you are talking about yields. Uh, grasshopper has about 15% more protein than cricket. So for the same amount of uh, 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 yeah, so-called food feed, you get better yield in terms of uh, protein. Sirius is also not missing out on the cricket trend. The company has a strategic placement in Charpool, a US-based maker of cricket protein bars. But still, not much is known about the long-term impact of insect protein on consumers. Much more study need to be done to establish uh, whether there's any toxic, toxic effect on, on, the, on our human health. Plants have also been used as an alternative protein source. Impossible Foods introduced its plant-based meat burgers to restaurants in 2016. Beyond Meat is another company that is producing plant-based meat products. The company successfully launched its Beyond Burger in 2016. For protein to be uh, recognized as a group protein, you need nine amino acids. And only certain plants like soya or uh, char seeds and certain uh, plants give you the full range of uh, ingredients. Besides looking for alternative sources of proteins, another way is to grow meat in the laboratory. Through cellular agriculture, cells are painlessly extracted from an animal and grown to edible size in cell cultures in labs. Instead of slaughtering livestock for the meat, 
we end up with meat-making factories. Memphis Meats has already successfully produced beef, chicken, and duck from animal cells. Israeli clean meat startup Supermeat hopes to replicate that success. The company is growing real chicken meat in the lab and is confident it will have a product on the shelves in three years. But there are challenges. A few years ago, we, we have come across this uh, burger, a uh, stem cell based burger, which cost 30,000 US dollars a piece. So, uh, uh, although it's promising uh, how to scale it up while reducing the cost such that it will be something that consumer can afford to, to buy. There is also the issue of consumer acceptance. Some will say it's like cloning meat. However you think about it, right, when you get a cut and your muscle gets uh, uh, injured, you actually your muscle grows. So conceptually, uh, growing meat in a lab may not be that scary. We all uh, remember the time when we had bird flu. And this kind of alternative technology actually helps us in times of crisis. Research is also being done to produce food that is higher yielding, of better quality, and resistant to diseases and climate change. Tomasic Life Sciences Laboratory has come up with enhanced selective breeding techniques. Genetic markers are now used to identify young fish with desired traits that they want for crossbreeding. We can actually take a little bit from their skin, look at the molecular markers, and see whether it's there in the fish or not. If it's there, then we know that these are the fish that have the traits that we want, and then we actually mass cross them. Using this method, TLL has been able to grow a more hardy variety of rice, tamasset rice, that is already commercially available. It has also applied the same process to develop its own variant of the Asian sea bass. TLL has identified markers that we want for this uh, fish, fast growth, uh, good quality meat, and resistance to diseases. So we combine this uh, molecular breeding together with a selective breeding and from 100 mass uh, crossing events, right, we then come up with uh, elite lines of fish that A, grows faster, 30 to 50% faster harvesting time compared to normal uh, fish, uh, are resilient to diseases, so uh, they, therefore they survive better and therefore has uh, more meat.